Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2. Long War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and this is the legendary Iron Man run on uh, Better One of this mod. We are in month number five and it is full fledged warfare on all fronts. We're, we're just finishing a power relay apparently. I was about to do my intro. I was about to say it looks quite good as we are uh, fully occupied. Massive amounts of soldiers that uh, that we currently use for infiltration and we do have five missions that we're infiltrating at the same time Today we're going to play a smash and grab mission one that is near and dear to my heart To get even some more supplies for instance to pay for this upgrade here thanks to the uh, uh, thanks to building the power relay on the um, on the sh uh, shielded core, on the, um, we got n an energy. We could uh, we could free up an engineer here, and essentially we still have energy left over. You know, I think we can even free up another engineer. To be on uh, totally honest, yeah, perfect. So we freed up two engineers, which. will decrease the time for our projects and proving ground quite drastically. I think that's a pretty decent trade-off. Having more people in proving ground means we can now also improve our equipment because if you look at all of the projects that are still ahead of us, there's quite a bit that we can uh, research and with enough time we're going to go there. But before we do all of that, let's take a look at our current mission, which leads us to South Africa, a smash and grab. I would call it a mission where we put the kind of leftover team together. Um, none of them are high ranking soldiers so far, so only sergeant sent below. We got a technician, two shinobis, two rangers, I wouldn't call that an optimal combination by any stretch of the imagination, but we're still going to do it. And we took a rookie with us uh, for hopefully um, a promotion. Uh, we're fighting against 10 to 12 uh, enemies. Good enough to give it a go. So let's launch the mission and see where this is leading us. And we landed, which is the first step to successfully do the mission. I can already tell you that there are going to be losses in this mission. It is as clear as the day because we are in the inner center of of a town. But there's also a lot of kind of housing in between us and the uh, the crates, which means we might be able to sneak our way almost all the way to the enemies. There are not going to be any tar um, any enemies up here, which means we can freely move all the way up here without losing our cover. Moving the entire team all the way up here. Stepping off. And last but not least, scooter. So the timer is not going to start as long as we're staying hidden, which is exactly why that is so important for us. Plus with no enemies on the top level here, we're almost free to advance very liberal compared to how we normally would move. Good, turn two. There's another street. 
Yeah, the building is unfortunately ending right here. Got it. Moving. So there is an open window here. Double time. The open windows aren't so far relevant for us. Um, as it means that we can jump through them without breaking concealment. Got it covered. Let's do this. Good, and we're putting everyone in position. Yeah, there's probably a pick down here. Okay. I would like to get into this house. So a first little scouting. Want to be very careful that we're not triggering anything. Haven't even spotted someone over here, which is odd. To be honest, also, the map seems to be huge, so I'm wondering why there is no chest that is closer than this one here. The random distribution must have put many of them almost to the very back side here. All right, moving up. Moving out. I've got enemy movement here. It's the first enemy contact so far at all. Copy that. And mind you, we're already like double moving for three rounds. It seems as if we have received kind of the largest map ever, or largest size category of maps, and at the same time, the lowest density of population. Bit of movement from the drone, but that's it. Our technician is moving up. Orders confirmed. Moving out. Yeah, really nothing to see. We're essentially taking high ground. and getting ready for an engage. Stepping off. I think we should take the rookie to the high ground as well. Good, in terms of scouting, Affirmative. 
This just seems to be a decent position. The drone is somewhat flying around in a weird angle. But on the other side, we're almost at the target location, so who cares, right? Don't want to go out there yet. Positioning ourselves at the window frames. Okay, next turn we're going to engage plus um, start getting the first crate. Okay, we got a Spectre and a normal Trooper down there. Still absolutely nothing to be concerned. And the Spectre will die easily once we, uh, once we can ambush it. Okay, apparently no movement whatsoever down there. We're probably going to be spotted out. And in good old XCOM fashion, we're of course going to trigger another pack, which was just outside of the vision range. Time for a bit of fortification here. And let's mark those supplies. We're picking up a steady signal from the transponder. Firebrand is en route to make the pickup. All right, time for a kill. That's how it's done. That takes care of the surveillance drone. Uh, I don't want to charge into melee because we know there's another pack here and that will just make it so much worse. I'd like to deal with the mech first. Yeah, I mean, we could go for a smoke grenade and simply like position ourselves here and fight them. You could also get rid of the mech. We do have defense at the moment. 
Yeah, I think that's a better choice. Let's kill it. Shredding was successful. We don't want to stand in the open. Let's position ourselves here. That'll give us an option for flashbang. The one thing that rookies are exactly as good as other soldiers, making sure that you can get rid of uh, or disorient the enemy. Okay, so back to the mech. It's a bit far away, which I think is unfortunate. Yeah, can't reach it with running there and we can only stand in the open really. But the one thing we could do Huh no, that wouldn't be close enough. I was uh, thinking if we could add teamwork, run here, and then rush in. Probably not going to work out. Okay, so we can simply move to here, and next turn we're going to attack in melee. We're still concealed. I saw a hit point bar just over here. Good, moving both both of the shinobis somewhat to the front line. We don't have enough movement to get all the way there, but that's fine. Could move over here and simply take an overwatch, could move over here and start taking shots. The question is how dangerous is um, the mech? It will take a shot if we're overwatch trapping it, there's a pretty good chance that it won't survive. And since it's the leader of the pack, it should move first. These here are just normal troopers. And the mech is the leader of the pack. So far they only see the two soldiers downstairs. Let's position ourselves over here. Look at that. 
clearly can see the hit point bar. That's the next pack right there. Now we're not going to hit any of uh, them. Instead we're going to overwatch. And overwatch. If the mech charges in, we're going to get it. And we're disabling both with a flashbang grenade. Not the the best turn, but sometimes you gotta pace yourself and don't play it too aggressively. There's always a next turn. Ah, that's bad. That was um, lightning reflexes right there. Flanking shot. No, instead it was using its explosives. Interesting. Well, and here we go. Time for some more loss. Yeah, interestingly, they're taking shots at the loss, uh, which is fine. It's a bit of a bummer that we couldn't finish the mech. Probably should have just re withdrawn a bit, but that uh, could have also spilled doom. If the mech would have found out that we were standing um, upstairs, it would definitely it would have definitely used its rockets to shoot us down from upstairs. And that would mean we would have taken damage and fall damage on top of it. Not good. All right, one of our shinobis is discovered and we may need to um, get into a fight with both of the shinobis. What the fuck is wrong? Why are they even able to act immediately? Oh, I know, because uh, they spawned during the turn of uh, the aliens. Mm -hmm. Interesting. All right, Rocky moves over. And that should take care of uh, the mech. Before we do that, however, let's get one of uh, the losts down. Enemy down. Ammo fast. Good job. And let's kill the mech. Soon another Lost Swarm might appear.
Let's get rid of the losses that are incredibly close. Moving into a flanking position, one of the most dangerous enemies is probably the Spectre down there, but we got a solid chance of critting it. Or just dealing minimum damage, which of course is also an option. Okay, so let's move over here. High ground, good position, and we would flank, uh, flank the Spectre. And this here could be a solution for a lot of uh, the loss plus all three of the advents. Can't move, unfortunately, when we're shooting the rocket. Very nice. Very nice. We do not yet have Blade Storm. Elsewise, I could simply move in and kill uh, kill the enemy without any fear of repercussions. So let's get rid of, uh, rid of the loss first. We do have an auto loader, so we're going to be fine. Only the best. Ready to go. That's how it's done. We have no more auto loader. So when we're now hitting the Spectre, that hopefully is a kill. Uh, just about short. Okay. Okay, we could we could kill the spectre by moving into melee. The other potentially less dangerous option to not pull someone else is just team working over here. And just get it down. Switching positions. Hostile neutralized. 
melee attacks unfortunately never regain um, the actions and we're going to lose this crate here which was a part of the trade-off on the other hand we're moving in with our last um, shinobi well aware that we're being spotted out but that's okay And there's the nice little 15 damage uh, crit. Holy shit. Okay, killed a pack of two. Killed a drone. Killed a pack of three. That's six down and it was nine to ten. Okay, let's advance with the rookie. Order's confirmed. Moving out. Marking the supply crate. Ready to engage. And since there are more supply crates over here. I would say we're starting to make our way in that general direction. Whilst we're doing so, let's make sure we can get some of the loot. Because believe it or not, that is probably worth even more than the crates themselves. Yeah, this here is 40 supplies right there. Thanks to Vulture. I want to stand in the open, so let's take full cover over here. Moving the designated coordinates. Glitch probably needs a med kit, so we're taking our rookie and moving up so he can heal Glitch next turn. Glitch goes for Overwatch in the meantime. And yeah, we're just double moving. I want these two crates. And just for this is firebrand. safety precaution, we're calling in an evac already. So that in five rounds, when we actually need the evac, it's going to be here. Firebrand is on deck for recovery. Keep marking those crates, Menace One Five. Get up and get back out there. Fuck! Did he just heal himself? Oh my god! I'm still. Oh, all right. Most ridiculous move ever, Saiken. Well done. You've just healed yourself whilst you were. Quite literally at almost full HP. Okay. Affirmative, moving out. What the fuck is happening? I oh my god. Okay, so that uh, is probably the the most troll turn that I've done in a while. Misclick, misplay. Got some here. And eventually 
triggering an entire new pack. That's the level of gameplay why you guys want to see and watch that channel. Good work. Clearly living up to um, the expectations here. Good, that's sustenance right away. Good thing is, if you've been around the block for as long as I have, you fucked up so many times before that you tend to develop habits of how to kind of unstuck yourself when worst comes to worst. And one of that is the liberal usage of smoke grenades. Which may or may not trigger the loss. They will. Well, luckily, the losses are running right into Advent, so jokes on you guys. Yeah, I would want to have the loot over here, but at the same time... Are we going to get shot from like right over here? Hmm. It's in a completely open position, and that's, uh, that's a bit a problem. Could position ourselves back here but we only got six hit points mm, no i don't feel that adventurous today position. it could mean that a single crit is essentially killing us and i don't want that to happen there's another chest over here one which we might be able to secure. Oh, that is a big mistake because now he's doubling down on his bed. <laughs> Essentially, when we kill him, we kill both of them. And thanks to our smoke grenade, we're not being hit. Great. That here is more than full cover, by the way. Now the lost turn. Gosh, I'm almost embarrassed for the last turn. First I heal the wrong target, then I misclick, and then I pull another pack. That was so noob. I blame it on long working hours and playing on the evenings. I have really no other excuse. Nice little retribution. Keep it coming. <sighs> Unfortunately, the loot expired.
Moving up. Moving to position. Let's deal with uh, some of the lost. That is one down. And we're not going to take any chances here. That's a nice little two for one. Alright, moving up. Which is of course the time where XCOM cheats uh, by putting in more enemies uh, than the original mission report stated. 9 to 12 my ass. Unless you accidentally forgot to count a couple of them. Enemy down. No rounds. We're green to go. Kill confirmed. I'm running low on ammo. Thanks to the advanced auto loader, we can get aggressive without being punished for it. So lots of reloads. Hmm, yeah, this here would be a great position, unfortunately. Way too exposed. This here would be a perfect position, but too far away. here into full cover so we can flank them next turn Already there. bit of a long play but it will be eventually worth it The rookie moves in, and I would just let him collect the uh, chests at this point. Moving into half cover. And let's see that we can at least start hitting the mutant. 50-50 is okay for me. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, I know the Viper would probably die. Uh, we're not merely attacking a mutant. We know better than that. But we can also not continue to stay here. That's a problem. 
So we're probably... We're probably fucked either way. The question is, if we would aggressively go and kill the Viper, yeah? What's the mutant's reaction? Could take a shot at us. We're relatively well armed. So we would survive it. But would we survive three shots? Mm, that's a bit more of a problem. Let's move into full cover plus smoke over here. Which means we have one exposed shinobi. Still in half cover. But nonetheless exposed. Moving over to here for next round in order to also flank. Not a particular, uh, particularly great turn of events overall. Viper might take shots instead of hitting us. Which is good. Keep on going. I'm pinned down here. All right, that is the dangerous part. Luckily, only a grace shot, which is okay. He is probably uh, going to hit us. Yeah, but luckily we're protected. Okay, good. We took less damage than expected. Okay. Our rookie begins to collect further crates. Because in all of this madness, he's the one who is sneakily stealing the crates. I love it. Mmm. Yeah, that would be fully in the open. I was hoping that we could take the position up here. Or even here. But we can't. And this guy's a real tough cookie. Plus, he's standing behind indestructible hardcover, which certainly doesn't make it easier.
All right, moving up here. That's affirmative. We're going to fortify. And before we kill something, yep, that's exactly what I was hoping for. We're shooting down the one lost. Enemy destroyed. Fire is incredibly effective against the lost. We could use either that or alternatively Alternatively, we're doing that. Target eliminated. I need ammo. And then we're reloading. Rock and, roll. and we're continuing with that. Enemy destroyed. And that. Which takes care of the loss. And I don't need to waste the charge of the flamethrower and we're going to use our beautiful charge to kill the viper Target disabled. great advanced laser sight very nice good which leaves us here with a nice little shot 100% Honestly, I had it all planned out. And then there was minimum damage. You can be greedy and move all the way and would could move all the way up to here. Probably not going to be able to kill the mutant uh, this turn to be honest. It sort of depends on our chance to hit it. No, nope. since we have missed it, it's not gonna happen. Instead we're healing ourselves. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to move over here. That's affirmative. And just disable him for one round. No grenades, no accurate shots from his side. And we're moving in. Mutants would be easy to deal with if it wasn't for their retaliation. They are extremely hard to hit and they usually have good positioning in full cover. I call absolute retarded bullshit on that one. Uh. That's remarkably bad. I did I did everything that I could in order to make sure we're not being hit. Not only does he like land the 10% shot, but he also crits. 
very unfortunate. So we're taking more damage than I initially anticipated. And most of it is the last pick with the mutant. But I'm going to get him. Because now that this crate here is gone, we're flanking the mutant. Alright, first things first. Why exactly are you not flanking the mutant? Okay, I do have an idea. It's a bit risky and it will involve like going in very, very far. Absolutely. But I do think that I figured it out. Standing right next to the mutant. I'm not going to shoot the mutant yet. Taking advantage of the action economy. I still headshot for the lost. Another headshot for a lost. And now it's time for dual barrel shotgun. <laughs> Alright. 20 points of damage. Oh, fuck you. That's what you got for critting me. I think we can all collectively agree that the mutant has deserved his fate. Alright, glitch reloads. 94%. Come on, buddy. That's one down. Another 94%. Two down. You know what, just for the purpose of action economy, this here, if he would hit, would be pretty efficient because we can use the actions of our other operators to kill the loss. Is there any chest that I've accidentally overlooked? Apparently there's a last one somewhere. Can't find it. That's one down. That's two down. Got no ammo. And that would be the last of them. No 
Moving over here. Absolutely. One hit point. And despite um, having the position indicator tell us uh, that we would be able to see the loss, we are not able to do so. We again cannot see the lost, but since we do have counter-attack, I would think it's safer to go in and front line with our shinobi. That way we can simply counter-attack whatever lost is attacking us. And since I've still not found out where the last crate is located, we'll just make it towards, uh, make our way towards the evac zone. Reloading. That's quite a few loss. Target neutralized. This is Firebrand. It's time to go. So instead of rushing over to the other evac zone, how about we're just recalling the evac zone right here. We'll appear in two turns. There's the last crate. Can't believe it. We managed to secure seven crates. What is... An incredible amount, considering, I mean, we didn't have an A-team, we sort of took whoever was available. And I was fully expecting that that here is going to be hard. But we got a lot of loot out of it. Probably almost a hundred uh, supplies worth of loot. And on top of it, I'm ready. we were um, even getting seven crates, which is probably another like 40, 45 supplies. On my way. Plus hopefully a few promotions. The only thing that stinks is uh, the level of injuries that we've suffer, uh, suffered overall, which is a bit more on the high end, to be honest. Specifically without a, um, support, our he healing time will be forever. Unnecessary chances out there. Already there. And the game always looks at the maximum hit points and how much damage you have taken at most compared to the maximum hit points. Ready to go. And in this case it is yeah, ninety percent of his health was gone. Not a problem. So that will 
probably be like around 20 days. Looks like they called in some friends. This is Firebrand. It's time to go. Yeah, I do agree. It's a good time to go. We charged in surprisingly hard and fast. It's probably the result of having two kind of melee characters. Yeah, and we killed 50 enemies again. Okay, uh, some of them were lost, but it was definitely not uh, 10 to 12 baseline. I have yet to discover exactly what type of exposure Good! I was wrong, by the way, not 20 days, but 13. But yeah, solid wounding times all around. So let's take a look. Glitch here. We need Formidable to prevent disasters from happening. I still like the Overwatch route um, with him. Lone Wolf is probably not a thing because he's just too entwined in the pack, but I could see Cool Under Pressure and Sentinel to give him Overwatch capabilities and aggression. I could even see Iron Curtain, but that would be <coughs> sort of a second uh, flame, uh, Flamer attack. Our rookie is going to become a sniper. Interesting. Well, he had an average aim, so it's not completely um, out of the ordinary to make him a sniper. Good. We definitely are going to reduce the detection radius. I like Dead Eye. I like both of them, however, hmm. Well, what you know what we could do is we could go for Shredder plus uh, Dead Eye and uh, give him uh, her shotguns. Let's go for precise shot then and use shredder and then we're going for shotguns with her essentially letting her flank with shotguns as well good 60 supplies wow that's a lot 20 alien alloys 15 alarium cores uh, 15 alarium crystals core scopes that's pretty good Good. In terms of leadership training, I think we could uh, let uh, the Shinobi train again. That's a good starter. We wanted to make most of the Shinobis um, and the, uh, the specialists into officers. Good, let's go for the resistance mech in hopes of finally uh, getting the resistance mech. Apparently we just finished infiltration somewhere. Oh yeah, we got our infiltration down here. At Oscar. So that's going to be our next mission. Resistance Contacts plus one. Uh, pretty m high baseline, but we also got a well-versed team. Oh, and I can play again with our Skirmisher. I'm definitely looking forward for that. So... Plus we get one Resistance Contact and even more Intel. And given that we're at 200 Intel, 
and that would be a great boost. Okay, we'll end the episode here. It's another hour. Thank you so much for your attention and for watching the series. I appreciate it and uh, see you in the next run when we're continuing to kick the alien's ass. Thank you and bye-bye.